Hello viewers, so we're going to run a taking you through the story for A level physics paper 2. And this video we're going to go through the topic of refraction of light at plane surfaces. So this video is suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering physics as part of their combination. So before we proceed, let's first look at the course outline of this paper. So physics part 2 is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics, where two questions come from this top question from these topics, and the second part is physical optics where two come from these topics. The third part is electrostatics and electricity, where three questions come from these topics. And the fourth part is magnetism and SC, where three questions come from these topics. So this part was already completed of electrostatics and electricity, and now we are on geometrical optics. The first one is not available because it doesn't involve calculations. So we began with this. Now we are on refraction of light, refraction of light at plane surfaces. So we're interested in the calculations, but Full notes are available in this book, Mastering Aerial Physics, Paper 2. It contains all the topics, notes, worked examples, and trial questions. So for copies of this book, you can contact the author on any of these two contacts. And other books for a complete set of physics, you need three books. One will be for Physics 1, another one for Physics 2, and the third one is for the topical question bank. Then for, both, for those doing principal mathematics, you need three books or so, Math 1, Math 2, and the Topical Question Bank. For those doing subsidiary math, it is only one book, and that is Master and Elev of Subsidiary Math, Paper 1. The rest are for all level. So for any copy, contact the author on any of these two contacts. So now we shall start our topic of refraction of light at plane surfaces. So in all of we covered some bit of refraction and we did some bit of calculations, but now we are going to first remind ourselves what we covered in all level and also build on that. So refraction of light is the change in speed or velocity or direction of light as it travels from one medium to another of different optical densities. Therefore, when light travels from one medium to another, its direction has to change because of the change in speed based on the densities, optical densities. So let's first illustrate that. We have a denser medium and a less dense medium which is air. So in that case, you realize that if a ray from the dense, less dense medium to the denser medium, it will be refracted towards the normal. Think of like this angle is smaller than this because it is refracted towards the normal. What if it was moving from a denser medium to a less dense medium? What would happen? So in that case, the ray will be refracted away from the normal. So always find out is that is it from a less dense medium to a denser medium or from a denser medium to a less dense medium for it is for you to draw a correct ray diagram. So here it was away from the normal, here it is towards the normal. Okay, then also the laws of refraction of refraction of light. There are two. One is that the incident ray, refracted ray, and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. Okay, 
Then the other one is that for a given pair of optical media made from medium, the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to sine of angle of refraction is a constant. So the two laws, we also need them. So like I told you here, we are not interested in the theory part, but we give a little theory which can take us to the calculation. So every theory I give is aimed at taking us to the calculation so that you can easily understand the calculations. But full notes are available in the books I have recommended. Even if you have already bought other books, I encourage you to buy these ones because they are well trusted. So now we shall go to absolute refractive index. So in refractive index, of course in Oliver we were just talking about refractive index, but now we need we have absolute and relative. We shall see how they are different. But for absolute, it is the same as refractive index of a medium. Refractive index of a medium and is defined as the constant ratio of sine of angle of incidence to sine of angle of refraction for a ray of light moving from virtue to a given medium. So absolute means it one of the medium must be air or virtue. And this is what we covered in all level, only that they didn't tell us that it's absolute. But now in L, in L level, we add on what we call relative refractive index from one medium to another where there is no where one is not air. So the formula is that so it can also be defined as the ratio of speed of light in virtue to speed of light in a given medium and that to be given by that formula so these formulas we shall use them during the calculations and there's something to note about absolute refractive index is that one refractive index of virtue is numerically equal to one okay then two refractive index of air at normal approximate atmospheric pressure and 20 degrees Celsius is 1.0003 but for practical purposes it is numerically taken to be equal to 1 as that of virtue so always in calculations we shall not use this we shall instead use 1 then 3 is the speed of light in virtue is numerically equal to 3 exponent 8 meters per second and so this will be the value of c so that has been absolute what about relative refractive index So relative refractive index is the same as refractive index from one medium to another and is the ratio of sine of angle of incidence in medium 1 to sine of angle of refraction in medium 2 for a ray propagating from medium 1 to medium 2. So I shall try to illustrate. So we have medium 1 of refractive index N1 and medium 2 of refractive index N2. So this N1 and N2 are what we call absolute refractive indices. So relative refractive, refractive index from medium 1 to medium 2 is written as this. And is equal to ratio of sine of angle of incidence in medium 1 to angle of refraction in medium 2. Okay. In terms of absolute refractive indices, it is the same as N2 over N1. It shall also be derived. But for now, we are interested in quoting the formulas, which will be 
used, but in the notes, everything is there. And then you also need to know something about Snell's law. So Snell's law states that when a ray is refracted from one medium to another, the boundary being parallel, n sin i is equal to a constant. So let's try to show that. So consider a ray of monochromatic light. We use monochromatic light. Monochromatic means light of a single wavelength. It can be red light, blue light, violet light, like that. Why? Because if you use white light, it will be dispersed, as we shall see in the next video, dispersion of light. So consider a ray of monochromatic light traveling across parallel sided media 1, 2, 3, as shown. So you'll have parallel sided media 1, 2, and 3. Medium 1, which is air, medium 2, medium 3, and medium 1. Then a ray is incident at the boundary between medium 1 and medium 2 where it is refracted towards the normal to, to reach medium 2 where it is also refracted towards the normal to reach medium 3 where it is also refracted away from the normal because this is denser and this is less dense away from the normal. So by geometry, this angle is equal to this angle, alternating angles, and also this is equal to this, alternating angles. So with that, we shall come here and say that by Snell's law, we know that n sin i is equal to a constant. Therefore, n1 sin i1 is equal to n2 sin i2 and is equal to n3 sin i3. So this implies that for a ray moving from medium 1 to medium 2, applying Snell's law will give us n1 sine i1 equal to n2 sine i2. But we know that i2 is equal to r1 because they are alternating. Meaning that I'll substitute for r i2 to give us this other expression for Snell's law at the boundary between medium 1 and medium 2. What about at the boundary between medium 2 and medium 3? So we should still get n2 i sin i2 is equal to n3 sin i3. Then I remember that i3 is equal to r2, therefore I come substitute. And this is Snell's law at the boundary between medium 2 and medium 1. So Snell's law will be used more frequently. That means that you have to master it. And with that, shall go through these questions. Question 1 says, A ray of light moving from water to glass makes an angle of incidence of 30 degrees at the water-glass boundary. If the refractive index of glass is 1.5 and that of water is 1.33, calculate the angle of refraction of the refracted ray. So we can make a sketch for what is given. So we have two media, there is water and there is glass. Then there is an angle which is incident at 30 degrees. It is refracted towards the normal at R because this is more dense than this based on these refractive indices. Therefore taking Snell's law, it means that this N times sine this is equal to this N times sine R which will give us that. Then you can substitute for NW, for I, for NG, and remain with R as the only unknown, therefore make it the subject to give you the angle they wanted. So angles are to two decimal places. Then question two, the figure below shows a ray of light moving from air through water, then glass, and finally air at the other side. That is the diagram. If the refractive indices of water and glass are this and this. So this is for water, this is for glass. Respectively, 
and the angle of incidence at the air water boundary which is here is 70 calculate angle x then angle y and the refractive indices of light passing from water to glass now this is what we call refract relative refractive index this is what we call absolute refractive index i believe now you know the difference between the two so we shall start with, with Roman 1 where they want angle X, meaning shall take Snell's law at this boundary, where N AI times sine 70 is equal to N water times sine X. So let's do that. So taking Snell's law at the air water boundary, N AI times sine 70 is equal to N water times sine X. N A is already 1 and M nota is over 3. So make sign S the subject and make X the subject. That will be the angle they wanted. Roman 2, they want the value of Y. So Y shall take next law at the glass air boundary. Let's look at it. So Snell's law at this boundary means n glass times sine y is equal to n air times sine 70. So I come and write code the Snell's law, then substitute for n g and n a, then make sine y the subject, and lastly make y the subject. That is Roman 2. What about Roman 3? Remember, they want refractive index of light passing from water to glass here. That is relative refractive index from water to glass. There are two formulae we saw. One was in terms of angles and the other one was in terms of absolute refractive indices. So in terms of angles, we need from water, we need sine i water to glass, we need R glass. So I water was X R glasses. The R, R G means the angle in glass, and this I I W means the angle in water. So sine X is that, sine Y is that, gives you that. But there are two formulas. Another one can choose to reuse absolute refractive indices. So N W G is equal to N G over N W. N G was this, N W was this. So in the end, we'll come up with that, which is the answer they wanted then question 3 came from your name 2002 paper 2 question 2b and says the figure above shows a layer of liquid confined between two transparent glasses x and y of refractive indices this and that respectively a ray of monochromatic light making an angle of 40 degrees with a normal to the interface between medium X and the liquid is refracted through an angle 50, which is here, by the liquid. Find Roman 1, refractive index of the liquid, Roman 2, angle of refraction R of the medium Y, in the medium Y. Roman 3, minimum angle of incidence in medium X for which light will not emerge from medium Y. So let's start with Roman 1, relative refractive index of the liquid. So taking Snell's law at the interface between medium X and the liquid. Let's first see the diagram. So medium X, liquid. So it means that relative index nx times sine 40 is equal to n liquid times sine 50. So shall come and write that. Then substitute for n liquid. Sorry, for nx is given, n liquid is not given. So when I make n liquid the subject, I'll come up with 1.29. 
So Roman 2, they said the angle of refraction R in the medium Y. So here, this 50, the same as this 50, alternating angles. So we shall use N liquid times sine 50 times NY times sine R. Equal to NY times sine R. So that gives us N liquid times sine 50 equal to NY times sine R. Then substitute for N liquid, NY, and make sine R as a subject, then make R as a subject. And that's what they wanted. So Roman 3 says, I find the minimum angle of incidence in medium X for which light will not emerge from medium Y. Just as you see here, it is glazes this surface between plate and air. So you come here and say that let I be the minimum angle of incidence in medium X for which light will not emerge from medium Y. So it means that we are going to apply Snell's law. Here the angle is 90 degrees and the refractive index is for air which is 1. Here the angle is 40 degrees and the refractive index is for plate X. So NX sine 40 degrees is equal to NA sine 90 degrees. Then we shall come and apply Snell's law. So NX sine I is equal to NS sine 90. So NX is that, sine 90 is that, and NA is that. So it's a new angle of incidence. Make it the subject and make I the subject. And that's what they wanted. Now we shall go to what we call real and apparent depth. So you consider an optical media, it can be glass. So this from here to here, the thickness is what we call the real depth. So when you put an object at the bottom and you view from the top, the object will appear to be raised. The image of the object will appear to be above the object. And that can be seen by this ray diagram. So a ray from the object here is refracted away from the normal to reach the observer's eye and this ray appears to come from a point which is I here. So the image, I is the image of this object. So to the observer, he sees this object as if it is at point I. And from there we can now come up with what we call apparent depth. From the top surface to where the image is and also the apparent displacement from the image between the image and the object so these three terms are very vital we shall use them more frequently now let's talk about this real depth by definition real depth is the actual measured height or depth not this word actual of the optical medium in its desired dimensions what about apparent depth? Apparent depth is the depth where the object appears. Not that we are using the word depth. Depth means we are measuring from top to where the image is. Is the depth where the object appears to be when observed through the transparent medium of different optical densities to the surrounding medium. Then refractive index of a material in terms of real and apparent depth. So the real and apparent depth of an object viewed through a transparent material can be used to determine the refractive index of that transparent material using the formula that refractive index is equal to real depth over apparent depth. 
So this formula is also very common, we shall be using it. They can give you real depth, apparent depth, and the S4 refractive index. So if T is the real depth, and N is the refractive index of the material, then apparent depth will be equal to T over N. Okay. Now, what if it is more than one medium arranged parallel to each other? So, in that case, the apparent, the total apparent depth, is the sum of the apparent depth due to each medium. For example, here we have water, we have glass, we have paraffin. This one has that real depth of T1, real depth of T2, real depth of T3. What will be the total apparent depth? Total apparent depth will be apparent depth for water, apparent depth for glass, apparent depth for paraffin and you add everything that gives the total apparent depth so with that shall go through these questions question 1 came from your neighbor 2022 paper 1 question 1e and it says a layer of transparent oil of thickness when you see the word thickness it means real depth Thickness 5 cm floats on water in a beaker. The bottom of the beaker appears to be 9.5 cm below the top. That is now the apparent depth because it is made from the top. Below the top surface of the oil, when viewed directly from above, find the refractive index of oil if the depth of water is 8 centimeters and I've told that the relative index of water is 1.33 so you shall first make a sketch so you have water and also we have oil so water they said the real depth is 8 and here the real depth is 5 and the said relative index of water is 1.33. For this one, we don't know it. Then the an object will be placed at the bottom and will appear to be at a point 9.5 centimeters from the top. So this will be the total apparent depth. That we shall remember that total apparent depth is equal to apparent depth due to water plus apparent depth due to oil then we shall substitute total apparent depth thickness of water thickness of oil refractive index of water so now we have only n2 as the only unknown which can be good so when i take this on this side i come up with this use the calculator the whole of this gives you this then make n to the subject and that will be the answer they wanted. So refractive index we round off to two decimal places. Question two says a cylindrical tank contains two transparent immiscible liquids. Liquid one of refractive index 1.3 is of depth 10 centimeters and liquid two of refractive index 1.45 is of depth 8 centimeters. Determine the apparent position of, of the bottom below the surface of the upper liquid. So they want the total apparent depth. So the apparent depth is equal to depth due to the first liquid 1 plus depth due to liquid 2. So T1 is here and T2 is here then N1 is here N2 is here so substitute will come up with this as the apparent depth they want so we have talked about apparent depth real depth what about apparent displacement so apparent displacement 
if T is the real depth and N is the refractive index of the material, then apparent depth is equal to real depth minus apparent depth. Sorry, apparent displacement is equal to real depth minus apparent depth. So come and substitute D is the apparent displacement, T is the apparent real depth, and this one you already saw that the formula for apparent depth is T over N. So T is common, I can pull it out and come up with this, and that will be the expression for apparent displacement. Okay, what if it is it has more than one parasite in medium? So they are still do the same. The way we did for apparent depth is the same way we shall do for apparent displacement. We sum up all. So water depth real depth is T1, glass real depth is T2, paraffin real depth is T3. So total apparent displacement will add up all of them and we shall come up with this formula. This for D1, displacement due to water, displacement due to glass, displacement due to paraffin. And with that, shall go through these questions. So question one comes from came from your neighbor 2000, paper two, question 2E, and it says, an object at a depth of three meters below the surface of water is observed directly from above the surface. Calculate the apparent displacement of the object if refractive index is 1.33. So we have the real depth and we have the refractive index so I can come up with the displacement they want. Then question 2 came from your neighbor 2006, paper 2, question 2c and says, two parallel sided blocks A and B of thickness 4 centimeters and 5 centimeters respectively are arranged such that A lies on the object O as shown in the figure above. Calculate the apparent displacement O when observed from directly above if the relative indices of A and B are this and this respectively. So the real depth for A is 4, for B is 5. And the relative indices for A is that and B is that. So with that we can easily get the apparent displacement. So this is the apparent displacement due to A and this is due to B. And if the calculator will come up with this as the answer they wanted. So now we shall go to question 3 which came from 2009 paper 2 question 3c and it says a scratch is made at the bottom of a thick glass container which is filled with water to a height of 1.5 centimeters. So we are saying this word edited because in the actual paper for this year they didn't put this height which made the question incomplete. So for us we edited it by putting this height. The scratch appears displaced by 0 0.5 centimeters when viewed from the above the water. If the refractive indices of water and glass are this and this respectively, find the apparent displacement when water is removed and the scratch is again observed from above. Okay, so here we shall need to make a simple sketch for you to easily see what they are talking about. So we have glass and we have water. So the glass contains water. The glass has a certain thickness, which you don't know, and water is of depth 1.5. 
So total displacement will be given by this, the one due to water and one due to glass. Then we substitute total displacement is 0 0.5. Then thickness of water, relative index of water. Thickness, which we don't know, relative index of glass. So that means that we can easily get the value of T2. So when we make T2 the subject, we shall come up with that as the thickness of glass. So when water is removed, the new displacement will be due to glass alone. So thickness, which we have got, relative index, which, have got, which we know, you can come up with a new displacement they want. Then question 4, a beaker is filled with water to a height of 8 cm. The apparent depth of a needle fixed at the bottom of the beaker is measured by a travel microscope and is found to be 6 cm. So Roman 1, what is the refractive index of water? And Roman 2, if the height is increased to 12 cm, by what distance would a microscope be moved to focus the needle? So Roman 1, we know that refractive index is equal to real depth over apparent depth. So the real depth was 8 and apparent depth is 6, which gives you 1.33 as the refractive index they want. Then for Roman 2, displacement will be given by this formula, then you substitute for thickness, then the refractive index to come up with 2.98. So that would be the displacement. So that has been refractive index using real and apparent depth of a parallel sided media. What if it is for a curved mirror? So the curved mirror, so we shall go through some of the proceed some of the steps taken to get the refractive index of a liquid using a cow a, co a converging mirror. So one is that the concave mirror is placed on a table with its reflecting surface upwards. We shall see it in the illustration. Okay, let's write as we illustrate. So we have a converging mirror placed with its reflecting surface facing upwards. Okay. An optical pin is clamped horizontally on the retort stand above the mirror so that its tip lies along the principal axis. Okay, then the pin is adjusted vertically while viewing from the above and a point is located where the pin coincides with its image without parallax. The distance R of the pin from the pole is measured. So this R is what we call the radius of curvature of the mirror. The test liquid is then poured into the liquid to a depth D. So we shall pour a liquid into the mirror. Okay. The pin is again adjusted to locate the point of coincidence of the pin and its image. The distance h of the pin above the liquid is measured. And the relative index n of the liquid can be obtained as follows. Okay, so let's draw our red diagram. 
that will be the principal axis. So this will be the new position of where the pin coincides with this image. And why does it coincide? It's because a ray incident at the surface of the liquid will meet the mirror at an angle of 90 degrees and come back along the same path. That is why the object pin coincides with the image pin. Then initially, before the water was there, this is where the pin coincided with its image. And we realize that this angle is equal to this alternating, this angle is equal to this alternating. And this is equal to this vertically opposite. So this is the pole of the mirror, this is the surface of the liquid, the depth is D, depth of the liquid. Then this is our capital R. Remember it was the radius of curvature of the mirror. Then they also had H, the height from the surface of the liquid to where the pin coincide. So we now know that refractive index is equal to real depth over apparent depth. In our diagram, real depth is from here up to here, which is CM. And apparent depth is from here up to here, which is MH. So, but with the, the measurements we have are from here up to here, and from here up to here, and from here up to here. So that means that for you to get CM, you will get the whole of this CP minus MP, which is here and it is R minus D and MH is already H here okay so this will be the formula for relative index when they talk about a concave mirror and the liquid being poured on the concave mirror you need to first know what is the real depth real depth is from the center of curvature to the surface of the liquid in other words you say radius of curvature minus the depth and the apparent depth is from the new the point of coincidence to the surface of the liquid that is h that means that if they give you the distance from the point of coincidence to the pole of the mirror you have to also subtract off the d however sometimes they can say that the liquid is very small and they don't give its depth so in that case mc cp is approximately equal to mc and therefore just say r over h that is if they don't give the depth of the liquid but if they give remember to subtract it off from the from the radius of curvature so with that, we shall go through some questions. Question 1 came from your name, 2005, paper 2, question 1D, and it says, A concave mirror of radius of curvature 40 contains a liquid to a height of 2 centimeters. A pin clamped horizontally and viewed from above is observed to coincide with its image when it is... 27 centimeters above the surface of the liquid. Calculate the refractive index of the liquid. So here we have radius of curvature, we have depth, we have the height from this above the surface of the liquid. Therefore the formula will be R minus D over H and that will be the radius the refractive index they wanted. Question 2 came from your name, 1994, paper 2, question 1D, and it says, A liquid is placed in a concave mirror to a depth of 2 centimeters. An object held above the liquid coincides with its own image when it is 45.5 centimeters from the pole. 
not this now the height is from the pole of the mirror okay if the radius of curvature is 60 centimeters calculate the relative index of the li liquid so real depth of apparent depth now here real depth is r minus d now apparent depth the height in this case it was measured from the pole of the mirror but the apparent depth has to be from the surface of the liquid that's why we also subtract of the depth of the liquid so make sure i read the question understand it and then write the solution then question three says came from neb 2015 paper two question two e and says an optical pin held above a concave mirror containing water of refractive index 1.33 coincides with its image at a distance of 12 centimeters above the mirror when the object is replaced by a little quantity of a certain liquid the point of coincidence of the object and the image becomes 13.3 centimeters calculate the relative index of the liquid okay so that's the formula and when the concave mirror contains water relative index is 1.33 real depth we don't know it apparent depth is 12 that means that real depth is 15.96 what about when the concave mirror contains a certain liquid relative index we don't know real depth is that apparent depth is this giving you the relative index they want so you have been talking about real and apparent depth now we are going to talk about critical angle and total internal reflection so by definition critical angle is the angle of incidence in the denser media know this word denser media for which the angle of refraction in the adjoining less dense medium is 90 degrees that is the definition for critical angle what about total internal refraction by definition it is a phenomenon when whereby light traveling from a denser medium to a less dense not this word so you shouldn't change the order it should be from denser to less dense medium is reflect reflected back to a denser medium and the angle of incidence in the denser medium exceeds the critical angle So with that, we can go ahead to state the conditions for total internal reflection to occur. One is that light must be up traveling from an optically denser medium to a less dense medium. For example, from air to from glass to air or from water to air like that. Then two, the angle of incidence in the denser medium must be greater than the critical angle. So if it is greater than there is total internal reflection. So how does total internal reflection arise? We shall answer this with aid of sketch diagrams. So consider a ray of light on a semicircular glass block of center O surrounded by air as shown below. So we have a semicircular glass block, this is glass, this is air. So this is denser and this is less dense. And remember for the internal reflection, ray must be moving from a denser to a less dense. So it must be moving from glass to air. So at this point, here there is no refraction because it is incident at 90 degrees. And the angle of incidence is I. In this case, the ray will be partly reflected and partly refracted 
and that occurs when the angle of incidence is less than the critical angle. Now what about the when the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle? In that case, the ray will be partly reflected and also partly glazing it will partly glaze the boundary or the interface, the air glass interface. So in this case, the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle. And what happens is called critical internal reflection. Because the refracted ray will glaze the surface. And that means that if you increase the angle of incidence further, what will happen? It means that the ray will be totally internally reflected. There will no longer be any refraction. It is entirely reflected and that's what we call total internal reflection. Here it was critical internal reflection but our interest is total internal reflection. So now we shall go through some of these questions. Question 1 came from your neb of March 1998 part 2 question 2c and says Roman 1 a glass block of refractive index NG is immersed in a liquid of refractive, refractive index NL. A ray of light is partially reflected and partially refracted at the interface such that the angle between the refracted ray and the refracted ray is 90 degrees. Show that NG is equal to NL tan alpha, where alpha is the angle of incidence from the liquid to glass. Okay. Then Roman 2, when the procedure in Roman 1 is repeated with the liquid removed and the angle of incidence increased by 8 degrees, given that NL is this, find NG and the angle of incidence of the liquid glass at the liquid glass interface. So you shall need to make a sketch. So we have the liquid and we have the glass. So this ray is incident at an angle of alpha. It is partly reflected and partly refracted where the angle between these two rays is 90 degrees. That means that this one is 90 minus alpha. <coughs> so Roman 1, taking Snell's law at this interface, we shall come up with NL sine alpha is equal to NG sine 90 minus alpha but we know that sine 90 minus alpha is equal to cos alpha then divide both sides by take this cos this side becomes sine over cos which is tan alpha and that is what they wanted in Roman 1 then for Roman 2 they said when the procedure in Roman 1 is repeated with the liquid removed and the angle of incidence increase the angle of incidence increases by 8 degrees if nl is 1.33 find ng and the angle of incidence at the liquid glass interface okay so when removed it implies that First of all, this is what we have from NL, that is what we have, tan alpha is that. Now when the liquid is removed, it implies that now instead of liquid, we have air. And the angle of incidence increases by 8 degrees. I know that NA is 1. And this one, we can expand it to give you this. So alpha is 
we have now alpha and ng but the good thing we know the value of tan alpha is here so you come and substitute for tan alpha and have only ng as the only unknown then simplify using the calculator so one over this it gives you this tan alpha is that then here this one times this gives you this and the whole of this times ng gives you that so that will give us a quadratic and that quadratic can be solved so when I use bulldozer method I'll come up with values of ng as this and this so I've got two values of n but one has to be eliminated to eliminate I remember that for total internal reflection to occur the ray must move from a denser medium to a less dense medium meaning this will be off because liquid had 1.33 and yet glass should, glass should be more greater than 1.33 and that is this value so this is off imply that ng is that now from this we can get the value of alpha which was that and that's what they wanted question 2 question 2 came from your name 2011 paper 2 question 2 C and it says the figure below shows monochromatic light X incident towards A on a vertical screen as shown when the semi circular glass block is placed across the path of light with its flat surface parallel to the screen a bright spot is formed at A okay when the glass block is rotated about the horizontal axis through O the bright spot moves down from A towards B and then just disappears at B a distance 1.68 centimeters from A part A find the refractive index of the material of the glass block then Roman 2 explain whether AB would be longer or shorter if a glass if a block of glass of higher refractive index was used okay now there's this word just disappears just disappears means the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle in other words the refracted ray glazes the surface as we shall see in the sketch we shall redraw so let's come here and say that when the spot just disappears at b then total internal reflection has just occurred at o So I can redraw that. So initially it was at this the spot was here. Then when they rotated, they reglazed the surface to point B. So this gives you a right angle triangle, meaning I can easily get theta. So I'll come and say that for triangle A or B, tan theta is equal to adjacent over, sorry, opposite over adjacent. Opposite is here. Adjacent is here. Therefore, theta is this. Then by geometry, when I add angles on a straight line, this plus this plus this, it must give me 180 therefore the value of C can be got which is the critical angle then taking Sine's law at O at this point it means N sine C is equal to 1 therefore N can be got as 1.5 so that was Roman 1 then Roman 2 
explain whether a b would be longer or shorter if a block of glass of higher refractive index was used so if the refractive index is higher the ray is refracted or deviated more hence a b would be longer So now we shall go to question 3 which came from your neb of 2012 paper 2 question 1c It says a tube of glass of sides 3 cm and refractive index 1.5 cm sorry refractive index 1.5 is placed on a thin film of liquid as shown in the figure below a ray of light in a vertical plane in a vertical plane in the figure above strikes a b of the glass tube at an angle i which is 41, 41 degrees after refraction at x the ray is reflected at the critical angle reflected at the critical angle of the glass liquid interface Roman 1 calculate the critical angle of the glass liquid interface and Roman 2 find the position from B where the ray strikes the glass liquid interface So you shall first redraw. So there's the incident ray with I and I1. Then to come, it will be reflected at this point to meet the surface where it will be reflected at the critical angle. Reflected at the critical angle means the reflected ray glazes the interface in other words there is critical in critical internal reflection okay so roman one we know that i is 41 now the funny thing is that angles of incidence are measured from the normal but what was given was a glancing angle so we had to capture the angle of incidence as and to become 49 degrees then you can use apply Snell's law at x where n a times sine i1 is equal to n g times sine r1 to give you that. Then when I make r1 the subject, I'll come up with that as the value of r1. And the whole of this is 90, meaning I can get the value of c. Then for Roman 2, find the position from b where the ray strikes the glass liquid interface they want the distance to be y so just say tan r1 is equal to opposite which is bx over adjacent which is by then substitute r1 and bx and make by the subject and that's what they wanted then question 4 came from your neb of 2014 paper 2 question 2c and says the diagram in figure above shows the path followed by a ray of monochromatic light through a right angled prism of refractive index 1.52 the light emerges in air at an angle of 47 degrees as shown Find the refractive index of the liquid. Okay. So you shall again redraw the diagram.
then we know that ng is 1.52 and angle of emergence is 47.6 therefore taking snare's law at y this is a so it will be na sine 47.6 is equal to ng sine r then come and substitute make sine r the subject and make r the subject okay the now that we have r we can get c from rectangle's triangle Then taking Snell's law at x, it means that relative index of, of liquid will be equal to ng sine c, which is ng is here, sine c is here, to give you 1.53. So that brings us, brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on refraction through glass prison so if you are not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button below this video and also if you know any student who is not yet on this platform please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like facebook and whatsapp so that can all benefit us a family